five players you have to let your idiot league mates draft in 2022 fantasy football. This is the August update. We dropped this in July about a month ago, and it has went nutty on YouTube. So we had to re-up. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all are fiends out there. So we're going to give it to you. Five players that you got to just let your idiot league mates draft. Don't fucking touch them. Just let them go by the wayside. Let them flimsily pass by you on the draft board. If you were in a league with me, it would never happen. And you can get in a league with me because our BDG three pass drops next week. Okay, six days from today. So if you have any questions about it, because we're going to run a little commercial for it right now, the BDG three pass, y'all can hop in the discord. Okay, it's obviously free to join any questions that you need to ask me or animal or anyone on the team. We are there answering questions 25 seven. If you don't give a fuck about it and you just want to go to the fantasy football stuff, we'll have a timestamp right here as well as in the description. But run the film, Tony. Welcome to the homepage of the BDG three pass that's a tough one to say i'm not gonna lie bdg3 as y'all know this is bdge's very first nft project and the goal of the bdg3 pass very simple to create the most anticipated engaging and documented fantasy football community and experience on the planet this is a community comprised of 1200 people and the bdg3 pass will give you access to that community for one year so what we wanted to do with the bdg3 pass was to give you access into our company into our brand into the people that have created BDGE into what it is today, create an experience around this. So all the things that we're passionate about, we hope to allow you guys to be part of that. Fantasy football is a, a huge part of our brand, obviously. A lot of the content that we make is about fantasy football, but the BDG3 pass is hopefully going to be much more than that. So we're going to be hosting in real life for IRL, for those y'all that don't leave Discord, events, whether it's tailgate meetups at a game, going to some outdoor bars on a Sunday, renting an Airbnb and having you guys come through and party and hang out and watch games and whatever whatever we've done it before it's a good ass time and we want to share that experience with y'all we're really really passionate about making content here and portraying our passions through that content we want to give you guys a chance to be in the content we've fortunately been able to build up a pretty big audience man and we want you guys to be able to leverage that if you're believing in what we're doing as a brand here and you want to be part of this project we want you to be part of our growth we're going to be doing weekly call-in shows we're going to be doing daily content about fantasy football nfl different sports or whatever and we want y'all to be on that with us throughout the season but on top of that, if you followed me for any amount of time, you know how passionate I am about brand building, about content creation, about business. So I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before. And once a month, I'm going to be hosting a workshop. I don't know how many of y'all out there that hold the BDG3 pass are content creators, but once a month, we're going to kick it. Y'all can ask me any questions about platforms, about monetization, YouTube thumbnails, whatever that crosses your mind that you think I might be able to help y'all on, you have access to me. This is a private workshop only pass holders can get into. You guys will be as much a part of the production of 2022 as the dudes in the office here with me and yes if you are a bdg3 pass holder y'all will have the option to join the big dog bash it is a free to play free entry 1200 person fantasy football league that's filled with a ton of cool prizes most of the content that we're making in 2022 will be focused on this fantasy football league so you have the choice to compete in this and one thing that i'm really really excited about that i don't know has ever been done before but we are literally clearing out a room in our office and calling it the BDG3 Holders Lounge. The lounge is gonna be equipped with place to hang out, TV, some video games, a bar. And if you are a BDG3 pass holder, you will have access to that lounge. You're allowed to come into our office, you're allowed to kick it, you're allowed to hang out, and you're allowed to be a part of this brand. I ain't fucking around. It's probably a reckless idea, but that's really what we are here. And we wanna portray that in every project and everything that we do. So if you're in New York and you're like, yo, I hold the BDG3 pass, guess what? You're allowed to come in. You're allowed to work here, allowed to hang out. Maybe play me in a game of Madden. Maybe guest likes lunch. Pretty fucking cool. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the project overall. We have a lot of really cool ideas and utilities that we plan to build on for the next year so if y'all are like 20 percent as excited as i am for this then you should have your fucking shirts tucked in by now again i welcome you to the bdg3 pass it's literally the only chance you're gonna have to walk through our office doors hang out with us catch a game of madden do whatever you want to do in here because the BDG3 holders have a fucking lounge in our office. We're going to have in real life events, at tailgates, all that good shit that you saw in the video. And of course, we have the Big Dog Bash, a 1,200 person fantasy football league with incredible prizes that we are all participating in. I can't fucking wait. All of our content's going to be made around it. So you got to act quickly, though, because we got six days till mint day, people. All right, let's tuck our shirts in. Let's flex our traps. Let's stop yelling. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. 
by the way, the Sleeper Bowl is a week from today. So if you're watching this on Tuesday, it's uh, Tuesday, August 16th. I want to say it's at 8.45 p.m. Eastern time. Big names in the draft. Obviously, A.J. Dillon, Tyler Algier, no big deal, no big deal. They asked us to graciously host it, and we're going to disrespectfully host it, of course. Let's talk about some disrespect on, drum roll, please, Brees Hall. Brees Hall is the first guy I'm putting on this list, and he's someone that I haven't talked about much this summer as it relates to redraft, but he's a little steep in price for me, man. I've seen him go pretty early in the fourth round in one quarterback leagues. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of camp he was like a late third-round pick in the 311, 312, 4142 area. I I just ain't with it. And I was trying to figure out why. Like, what's, you know, what's what's the problem here? There's an underlying issue that you're not facing, right? It's almost like I needed to go to a therapist in order to know what the anxiety underneath my skin was, right? And when I get on video, that's when I that's when I actually face my fears here. And Brees Hall was a fear of mine, man. And then I started to realize why, because I've read some things about Brees Hall and I've said some things about other players that related to Brees Hall, but I didn't connect the dots here. And this is from a really good article from ESPN, basically talking about all of the training camp reports. And they kind of just like took the biggest pieces from each team and related it to those players. And you guys can read it here, but Basically, what it says, the workload split between Michael Carter and Brees Hall creates the most fantasy intrigue. The coaching staff prefers a committee approach, so don't, do not expect a one-man show. Hall has the talent to overtake Carter as the RB1 and probably will at some point, but don't expect that to happen quickly. So this is this is kind of what I'm feeling, right? There's There's been something in me that's like that doesn't feel like Hall is going to have the three-down workload, and that makes me nervous, right? Because I've made this point over and over and over and over again, and it's one of the reasons that I didn't like Kenneth Walker, even though he's getting faded into fucking oblivion at this point. He might end up being a good value. But Brees Hall has a lot of the same thing going for him. Slow offense, probably bad offense. Also not a first-round running back. Not a first-round rookie running back. And we see it year over 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 year. Non-first round rookie running backs. You're talking about second round, third round, fourth round, whatever. They take time to become the guy in their backfield. They take time to be fantasy relevant, usually six, eight, 10, 12 weeks. They either need that time to pass by or significant injury. And I think as long as Michael Carter is healthy, we're going to see a lot of valuable plays, a lot of two minute and four minute drills go to Michael Carter. We're going to see a lot of red zone work go to Michael Carter. Brees Hall will be great in between the 20s. There's no question about it. But using a late third, early fourth on a player that's seeing a lot of kind of empty calorie carries is not really something I want in my fantasy diet. I think we might see something closer to like a Javante Melvin Gordon split last year, right? And this is uh, not going to be like a 75-25 split like we all we all hope it to be. Hall's still the 101 for me in super flex rookie, rookie drafts, right? Dynasty, I'm all in on Hall. The, the, ta- the talent is ridiculous. But for redraft, again, we have to hold our horses because we've seen it play out with Swift and Dobbins and Akers and fucking Gibson and Miles Sanders and all these guys that we get excited about that are non-first round rookie running backs. They take time to take over the complete fucking backfield. And I think the same is going to be for Hall. And the earlier those players go in in season long drafts, the riskier the pick becomes, right? Like it's okay to take Kenneth Walker now because he's a fucking 10th round pick. It's okay, it, it, it was okay to take like Akers, Dobbins, Swift because they were, you know, six, seventh round picks. But Hall is getting up to the point where he is, you know, again, early fourth round. And what if Zach Wilson is just the absolute worst? What if he's just a shit quarterback, right? Like that's within the range of outcomes. Training camp has not really been very pretty to him so far from what I've heard. Obviously, there's been good days and bad days, but last year they were 26th in yards per game. They were 28th in points per game. This could just be a committee in a bad offense. Also, I didn't realize this when I was doing some research, like but Zach Wilson is like athletic enough to be annoying on the goal line. Last year, he only played in 13 games, but he had six goal line carries, which was more than Kyler Murray, more than Dak Prescott, more than Joe Burrow, Cam Newton, DeAndre Swift. Like I'm just saying, like Zach Wilson actually is kind of fucking annoying being there on the goal line and no one ever talks about it. So between Carter and Zach Wilson, I think Hall is going to be a little bit disappointing and probably finish in that like RB 20 ish range, RB 20 to 23 range this year. And that's not a good ROI for a third, fourth round pick. So move on to number two. And we have Joshua Jacobs of the Raiders. This is at this point, this is the easiest fade in all 2022, but you might just be tuning into fantasy football. And I need to remind you, I need to yell at you not to take Josh Jacobs this year, man. This man was like featured in the Hall of Fame game. That is, that's like an embarrassing thing to put onto your resume, right? You, third and fourth stringers are the ones that play in these Hall of Fame games. They sat Derek Carr, they sat Darren Waller, they sat Devontae Adams, and they said, Josh Jacobs, we're going to give you 48 carries. We we hope you get hurt. He was just asked to smash his head into like 300-pound defensive linemen over and over and over again, these third stringers, right? And I wanted no part of Jacobs prior to this game. He's in our 
all fade lists in our draft guide right now, which you can get by signing up on prize picks, promo code BDG. I'm depositing 10 bucks. But this was the absolute nail in the fucking coffin. You have a new staff that came in, declined his fifth year option immediately. They're going to use a committee under Josh McDaniel. They were 30th ranked offensive line entering the year per PFF. Samir White is very good. Kenyon Drake's going to be back. It's just not going to be a good year for Josh Jacobs this year. And he'll be on this list until his ADP hits like round eight or nine, to be honest with you. There's a lot of these thick running backs, man. You have him, you have Damian Harris, who yesterday I talked about how much I liked Ramondre Stevenson. And because of that, I mean, we're seeing the ADPs kind of converge, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing Stevenson getting drafted over Damian Harris, which is probably a little bit out of pocket, but I might fuck around and do it. Damian Harris is a guy who is a two down player. And this is an offense that needs to utilize players that have more pass catching to their to their game, right? And they drafted these other guys. It's clear that Damian Harris is not going to be part of their plan next year. Like they drafted Kevin Harris and Pierre Strong and these other younger players because Damian Harris is going to walk after his rookie contract and find, you know, hopefully success elsewhere. But he had 15 rushing touchdowns last year. Didn't didn't catch passes whatsoever. So if you're going to bank on a guy scoring, you know, 15 touchdowns again, 10 touchdowns, 12 touchdowns, like I'm not someone who's going to bet on that. Maybe he scores seven or eight touchdowns and he's kind of useful in fantasy sometimes, but that feels like a ceiling outcome right now, right? And I'd much rather have the guy that has three down workhorse ability possible. I'm not saying it's going to hit. I'm not saying it's even likely, but week 10 hits. I think the most likely outcome is Stevenson has taken at least a 50, 50 share of this backfield with upside to take more. Uh, another bigger back that I think you need to let your idiot league mates draft is David Montgomery. Everything we've heard out of camp is that this is going to be much more of a committee approach. We got David Montgomery taking fucking special team snaps in training camp. I know there's not much to it, but Khalil Herbert's going to be a thing. Tristan Ebner is going to be a thing. So there's going to be too many things in this backfield for David Montgomery to hit anything near a ceiling. He's not an explosive player. They're not going to score touchdowns because their offense absolutely stinks. Their O-line stinks. They're a slow pace team. Their weapons are terrible. They're not going to move the ball downfield. So stay away from David Montgomery. Stay away from Damian Harris. Stay away from Josh Jacobs. All at current ADP right now. If they drop another three fucking rounds, go wild. Do whatever you want to do. James Robinson is not going wild this year. I can tell you that. He's listed as the starter on their depth chart. Literally does not mean a thing right now. Is he ahead of normal recovery for an Achilles tear? Sure. But it doesn't mean he's back to full health whatsoever, like even close to it or even close to the player that he was prior to the injury. Like hoping you're hoping for a prayer that he returns like Cam Akers did. And Cam Akers wasn't good when he returned. He might get some run, right? But ETN is the pass catcher there. And you're going to get a slower, diminished version of James Robinson coming this soon after the Achilles tear. Most of y'all know not to draft James Robinson, but a lot of you guys are coming from last year, the last two years that owned him. And you're like, James Robinson has been a value every single year. And you're like, oh, he's back from his Achilles tear. Guys, I'm, there's so much more involvement in this medical type of injury for a guy like James Robinson that his upside is just absolutely zapped. Even if he was to get 55% of the work in this backfield, all, most of his pass catching work is gone to Travis Etienne. And he's going to be a slower, less efficient version of himself because of the Achilles tear. Robinson has played like an insane percentage of the backfield snaps here. And, and that's gone. I won't even be close to it last year. I just don't want a part of a committee in one of the league's worst offenses that's not going to catch passes because there goes all the upside. Does this mean I should probably relax on ETN a bit? Maybe if all reports are glowing about Robinson from camp. But again, the smart play here is to there's just way too many red flags with a guy seven months removed from an Achilles tear. I don't care about your comments about modern medicine and cam acres. Just do yourselves a favor and do not draft James Robinson this year and do yourself a favor and and do not draft the last guy on this list. If you're enjoying the list so far, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing videos like this every single day. Tony Pollard, man, it's the same shit every single fucking year from you guys. This is legit ADP. He's getting taken ahead of Chase Edmonds, Rashad Penny, Kareem Hunt, Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, who I don't even like, obviously, but like CEH too, I don't like either, but what the fuck? Tony Pollard ahead of those guys? Like this is Zeke's backfield. I don't understand why you think it's going to be any different this year. You're drafting a clear backup, like a clear fucking backup to like six starting running backs are behind him in ADP right now. He had the best, Pollard just had the best season of his career so far, and he was like the RB40 and half PPR points per game. And it was because Zeke was playing on a fucking torn PCL. Tony Pollard had three games of double-digit half PPR fantasy points last year. He literally scored seven or fewer half PPR fantasy points in 10 of 15 games. Like, that's not standalone value. I don't know what league that you're playing in where you're happy with fucking 5.2 fantasy points in your running back two or flex one spot, but I want no fucking part of that. And I can't, I can't wait to see the comments and the reports of, like, he's going to be used more in the slot this year. 
They fucking, those are my absolute favorite. The same shit every single offseason. They said it last offseason. And guess what happened? From 2020 to 2021, he actually ran fewer snaps from the slot per game going into last year than he did the previous year. So please miss me with the fucking more slot snaps. Like this is a thing that every running back gets hyped up for. Even the most voluminous fucking slot running back snap guys get like four to five snaps per game from the slot. It is so nominal. It is so minimal as to what it actually means for their overall production. It's it's sickening to me. So stop drafting Tony Pollard ahead of Chase Edmonds and Rashad Penny and Kareem Hunt and Ramondre Steve. Like what are we doing here? Let your idiot league mates draft Brees Hall. At the end of the third, early fourth round, Josh Jacobs in the fifth, sixth round, Damian Harris in the seventh round, James Robinson, honestly, anywhere before like the, the 11th, 12th round, Tony Pollard in the eighth round. Like it, it is insane. Well, that's the list right here. You can argue with me, yell at me in the comment section. I feel like half of these were obvious, but I know a lot of people come that are new in August that need to be refreshed a little bit. But if you're a veteran to the fucking game, then I still love you and I hope you still love me. If you do, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Go put the D and subscribe. Make it subscribe to the channel next Tuesday. Write it in Sharpie on your fucking wife's forehead so you don't forget the Sleeper Bowl on our YouTube channel. We hosting it. Big things. I love y'all. See you later.